gives me great pleasure to say that Consciously interviews the one and only Sarah Tobias. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> she is definitely a unique musician. She's well known for the saxophone. She played a flute. You can you can chop and change if you need to. Yeah, I mean I'm not like what... highly trained in any of them. I just like dabbled in yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are so many names that you have worked with. Is there anybody left that you'd like to work with? Because it's that it's that many. Well, I've been very lucky in the world of reggae music, and yeah. I'm constantly getting to work with lots of different artists musicians and producers yeah. so yeah a lot of it is is um a great surprise and a treat for me yeah you know it's a treat it's a treat for us as well mm. you know seeing you in action i talk with audrey scott about you all the time so we're usually talking about you when we go out to see you live unfortunately over the last year or so we haven't had that um opportunity but then mm. obviously there's the videos and everything so we still get that treat your work is vast. You're, you're, you've done a lot, a lot of great work. But um, I think I'd like to just go back to how you came to be the Sarah Tobias that you are today. My mum and dad both really listened to lots and lots of different music at home. They had like lots of wide tasting music. Yeah. So that was really good for my brother and I because we both like like to play music. You, you were music, yeah. yeah. So they, they, um, they, they accepted you as you were? Yes. We went to the supermarket and they had this keyboard in the supermarket and um, mm. those Bon Tempe organs. And I remember playing I'll See You In My Dreams and then uh, customers were enjoying it and saying, Oh, that's lovely. Oh. So yeah. That was my first experience of, a, you know, you can make like music is it makes people happy. So that's yeah. nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So did, did did you, is that when you decided I'm going to do music, I'm going to... No, I still oh, did. Right. I was still, um, I wanted to be an astronaut at first. Yeah. And then I wanted to be a writer. So, but I suppose in a way, those things do come into music as well, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They where, do. where were you born? Where, where did you grow up? I was born in Manchester in the northwest mm. of England. Okay. And we moved several times when I was little and then um, started school in West Yorkshire right. and that's where I learnt recorder at school and clarinet because the music departments in West Yorkshire are really good. There's music yeah. for all the children and access to instruments and also we had um, a band which we went to on Saturday mm. and, um, so we got to play with lots so it was great getting to play in a big crowd of musicians and this is the first vinyl I ever recorded on here I am on clarinet with the Wakefield Metropolitan Wind Orchestra oh. and that was that was an experience recording because they recorded the whole orchestra and they just had a few mics around the room and then we had a few yeah. of each tune. And So how old are you then? So this was actually 1979, so I would have been 13. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, um, 
was that your choice to play uh I, I should say is it is it wind instruments what what, what do you say the, the recorder yeah, yeah. wind instruments i just end up because yeah. we had recorder at school and i remember seeing one of the older girls playing clarinet in assembly and yeah. i just went oh I, I want to do that i just i just yeah i want to do i want to do that so and luckily I was able to. Did you have formal training or? We had lessons oh, at I can say, because you're, you're almost like classically trained to me. Well, I was when I was younger, just for a few years. You didn't leave school straight into music. Um, I went to college, but I didn't do music. And then, but afterwards, um, and also during college, I should say there was musicians there. Part of the time I was sharing accommodation with a drummer and okay. I, I went to band practice with him a few times, which was at yeah. the singer's house. And I used to have to go on the, I used to have to go on the keyboards and stuff. What happens after college? I was introduced to some um, buskers, and this mm. was about 1920 years old so they right and um suzanne was playing the clarinet i was like oh, i used to play that so she helped her a little bit but she was also playing kit drums as well she was a drummer. and uh she said oh the clarinets aren't loud enough we need to get saxophones that's how i ended up playing sax we traveled and played some different festivals in this yeah. country and abroad like france and spain and we, we won a competition in Covent Garden and ended up going to Houston to play at the International Festival. So okay. And we went to New Orleans on Busk there as well. That was nice. Got That's to nice. All the local musicians. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm. Did, did, did you experience any danger or trouble in, in those times? What was it like? Well, the, well, we were told when we went to the jam session in New Orleans, they told us don't mm. wind the windows, just stay in the car, don't wind the window. One of the areas Whoa. we were going through, they were just, just stay. So you know what it's like sometimes you go to certain places and they're a bit hot. You talk about the buskers and you talk about other musicians that you've met. What genre were you then? Because I, I know it wasn't, you, you didn't just go straight to reggae. You, you 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 seem quite um, eclectic. Is that the right mm. word? Eclectic in your taste. Yes. So. I just it just depends on who you meet up with, and yes. you just fit in with whatever they're doing. Cause yes. A bit of a sheep. So I just follow whoever yeah. <laughs> whoever's interested. Oh, go and follow yeah. them. See what they're doing. So lots of different styles of music. Playing with. Um, in like uh, rock bands, Latin music, um, high life. How did you decide to live as a musician? I just felt the urge that I have to do, it, even though I kept, I tried doing normal jobs, and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, it was always a bit. Mm, I was a cleaning lady for seven years. <laughs> Sarah, you're surprising me. <laughs> so we come on to the big R. Um, who or what introduced you to reggae? Because honestly, I have the impression that you've been around like youngs, like for a long, long time. Mm. Okay. No, no, yeah, it's so... quite recent. So a lot of the people I'm working with, they've been, they, they would like started it from the beginning and yeah. developed it. So I'm just coming in at this yeah. end now. Yeah. Mm. So how did it begin? The one juggalo died the sax and flute player mm. i was at mellow mix and there was jabi jabuni putting some music together for his nine night and for his funeral so jabuni gave my number to a few people when they mm -hmm. were for a sax player so uh, and just from there um he gave me lots of contacts i love watching your posts because your posts are humorous they're original and um some people would say that you've got a, a, a sort of quirky personality um <laughs> so, <laughs> but you got you got you got a unique original um i love i love um your posts and i love watching you do different things with mm -hmm. um your musical instruments mm. is that is that just an impulsive thing? You just get up and say, you know what, I need to do something. I need to go to the 
woods or the you know because I love those ones where you're playing in the woods and do you just do you just make it up as you go along or well sometimes you know you just get the urge to share something yeah and, and um I get ideas of how to do it sometimes yeah. I would get an idea and put it all together and yeah and then you you put the video out and then somebody will ring up and say Sarah take that down now take that down now. <laughs> <laughs> why why all right then all right then all right <laughs> no I think it's I think it's fantastic sometimes they go through Lovely. sometimes they go through yeah but all this was before they had TikTok and Instagram and everything. Yeah, I've always liked yeah. making funny video. Well, I think that for my own you, entertainment. You do. Yeah, that's what I said. Else. You, you, you do some really quirky stuff that makes me smile. I think it's mm. lovely. So, uh, all right. So, um, right. So, the last ten years, you, you know, you, you, as I said, your your uh, resume, let's say reggae resume, it reads like a who's who. You know, great mm. names. Mm. Um, I always ask artists to name about three because it's. I, I know it's difficult for them to name one, but three uh, highlights of your musical career so far. Mm. Mm. It was uh, well. I do what I do a lot is record at home, so I get mm -hmm. to record for lots of people. Yeah, and um, that's always that's always nice because. Um, I, you know, my playing is quite limited. And then when I realised that if I can edit it myself, I can make it sound yeah. a bit yeah. more. I can kind I know of control what, what I'm doing. Yeah. So actually more into because when I was a kid, I used to like getting cassettes and making cassettes and chopping them up and sticking yeah. them together and everything like that. So uh, that's this kind of an extension of that coupled together with the cleaning skills. Yeah. It makes recording... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was doing that, and then there's been lots of nice times playing with different artists and yeah. musicians. It's yeah. just really, you know, when you're doing a gig and then the music just sounds so nice, you're like, wow, oh, it's like you're in in heaven or yeah. you've already died <laughs> you're, you're, and gone you're, to you're heaven. You're dancing as well. <laughs> you're already in, in musical heaven. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Let's just say, I say, Sarah, I want you to play at this concert. Uh, these are the songs that I want you to play. Um, what is your pre preparation, your method of preparation? What do you, what, how, how much notice do you need? At the moment, as you know, live gigs, it's not, it's not happening. happening. Yeah. So it's mm. all, you know, streaming, streaming, streaming. Yeah. Yeah. This week, but it's nice to do that rather than not do anything. Anything, yeah. It's really nice to do that. So, so for instance, Friday, I did a thing which I do every week with Camiton Arts. They okay. A Zoom where they have a different guest artist every week. It's either okay. a poet, a rapper, a musician. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the resident musicians, so through Zoom we oh, good. just jam. I did a Zoom on Friday night after that, around the corner, um, DJ mm -hmm. Tyler. He just asked me in advance which tunes he would like. Oh yes, yeah, Saturday I played at somebody's birthday party on Zoom. It was okay. a surprise, like, so they book you and get yeah. surprise them. So I just prepared a couple of tunes. And then yeah. Sunday, I played at a party, so that was Ibiza sax. They wanted Ibiza sax, but then when I got there and did my three tunes that they asked me to do, they said, "We heard that you do reggae. Can you do you think you can ah. play this tune and that?" No, no, no. So I end up staying as long, sort of longer, yeah. until it's time because yeah. I have to come home and record. Um, because uh, Winston Reed is coming around. We've been recording some stuff here for my professor. Yeah. So, so it depends on the occasion, you're, you know, you don't have a set, you're not one to say, right, if you don't give it to me in a certain, in this amount of time, then it won't be done. It, it depends on what it is. That's what you're saying. Well, we did one last week and it was um, at BBMC and they had five artists. So all the artists in their tunes in advance. So you've got time yeah. to um, listen to all the tunes. You know, you need to know if there's any other horns, if I'm the only one, work out which horn to play on what. And, yeah, yeah. And then when you get there, 
you know fight it out with the keyboard players yeah <laughs> yeah no nicely negotiate <laughs> nicely <laughs> and then uh it but sometimes when you're doing the ones like Giants of Lovers Rock or that one we did mm. at Red- Reading last year and there's just loads of artists you sleep yeah. all night listening to the music and then you put it on while you're asleep and you're like no 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 G sharp and then just uh, really wake up and right now it's just because you know as you get to play with artists over and over again then you know all the tunes, mm. tunes. but it's a bit different knowing that you when you're a horn player because you know you can listen to some of these records and you're singing along with them but then when you've got to the <laughs> line, it's like you know yes, yes, <laughs> oh, i'm supposed to be in now aren't i yeah so you've got to concentrate mm. yeah because i have watched you on stage and you get into the music you start moving mm. and yes <laughs> you do do that that's really um has there been, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of the artists that I've interviewed, um, more artists and musicians, they have a period where they just think that they can't go on with music or they feel that they need to take a break away from music. Have you ever felt like that? Only when I'm ill. Things like I had an accident a couple of years ago, so I couldn't use this arm, so I just start recording with two mice instead of one mice. <laughs> because mm. I can record. I've been yes. lucky and because I know how to do the street I can do the streaming thing and I've yeah. got no different kinds of music so I mm. kind of trust that I can still carry on do- doing that yeah even though everything's really changing good. you're resourceful you're you're that's 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 what I'm getting you you, you tend to take what you have and, and make something of it mm. yeah. I'm very lucky because I've got all of these toys to play with and you know yeah. I've been to places where you haven't got that much access to yeah. instruments yeah or internet or electricity and everything so i know mm. we're totally spoiled rotten over here so you know yeah. who has there been anyone that's influenced you um as, well, I, as uh, a part, you know someone who plays those totally instruments? yes all of the horn players all of the horn players that have been doing this before me mm. and, um and some of them i got to know personally because i've been working mm. and they've been really really wonderful and helpful and Mm. taught me lots of things yeah yeah so and and do you ever feel intimidated by you know other musicians or being you know on stage with other musicians because you've been in some great places yeah and great events well I've been lucky because they're all everybody's been really lovely and yeah made me feel comfortable and um, they just tell you if you're being daft or (laughs) So, all right, how would you describe yourself as a musician? How would you, if someone says, Sarah, describe yourself, how would you describe yourself? I suppose as a person, really. Um, my skills, I think, is from since I was a kid, has been more to mm. do with mimicry, being able to okay. copy things, and that's why I'll get to play with lots of different people. Mm. Not necessarily as an original originator of anything but what we're coming to doing original things is now people send me rhythms and ask me to create horn lines and yeah. create, create melodies so that's nice because I've got a strong basis to start from is there anything you still like to do I'm going to learn some more scales really <laughs> I can play. The way you put your face <laughs> why not because there's yeah. only so much stuff you can do with splicing yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to just go. Yeah. But, you know, it doesn't mean I can't play fast. It's just I can't, you know, the certain yeah. things you can do. You'd like to, yeah. Yeah. In order to, to channel what's coming in my mind. Yeah. And what, what, right, I mean, um, we're coming to the end of the interview, but I'd like to know what you think of the UK reggae scene. Um, given that we've had covid and given that there's you know been a massive change but still on a whole what do you think had what do you think of it at the moment at, you know currently well there's a lot of exciting things still happening mm. even though there are yeah. lots of restrictions yeah so, um for me personally there's lots of recordings that i've worked on that are going to be coming out soon so the excellent got some things to look forward to 
and um, there's some gigs coming up. Let's see if they happen. Tipper Irie, Lloyd Brown. You know we've uh, lost a lot of the the elders of the genre, yes, we have. which is it's been really sad. Yeah. But then we've got new people coming up who next generation. Yeah. Who have got yeah. lots of exciting things yeah. to bring as well. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Yeah, I think what, what I find um, interesting is that although there's a, some, some of them make changes to reggae, some of them still stick to the traditional. So you hear lots of different sounds mm. coming from different age groups, sometimes very surprising. Mm. So yeah, that's nice. Mm. So what um, I was going to ask, what, what, where can we find you? I mean, I did go on your website, very nice. You might find me on Instagram. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There are two bias. Yes. That was from Joy yes. Mack who gave me that name. Love and, it. I love it. And I'm playing on lots of records, but you wouldn't know because my name's not on the front of it. It's kind yeah. of weird if you're an instrumentalist. It's like I've done an album yeah. with my name on the front, but I didn't write the the tracks. I just wrote the top bit. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Mm. Sometimes it's the other way around. Like somebody else will build a track and I'll make a whole tune on it, but it hasn't got my name. Yeah. It's got some name so you can't find by googling um but that, then again the, the the crediting system is all kind of being changed yes yes um, yeah yeah so that you can see who wrote what and who played what. yeah and that would be fairer because sometimes i also get the credit for oh that was wonderful i'm just copying some solo that dean fraser did or winston rose or patrick or green or buttons or something yeah but you can so good I mean, yeah. So really, you know, all of these people who were playing on the records and then people, mm. you know, you've had Tommy McCook and Roland Alphonse. And also there's a lot more women artists mm. coming to the front now. Yes. Whereas yes. a few years ago we were like, oh, it just seems to be dominated by... Yeah, that's right, yeah. And it seems to be now uh, a mm. lot better balanced. And, um, and then the more that happens, the more you feel like it's okay to come to the front yes yeah what you're up to yeah. it, bo- yeah. it boosts everybody you know involved yeah that's, yeah, right, that's yeah. true it makes it more so i know you're on facebook as well so mm. but that's that's your proper name on facebook sarah it's my proper Tobias. name yeah yeah <laughs> name. do not make me laugh mm. <laughs> okay and um uh, I'll, I'll put everything you know at the end of the um the video but uh we we um uh, i i as i said you, you got your website you know all the information about you all that you've achieved which is a great amount is on there so um everything is there but um i have fulfilled one of my ambitions which was to interview you because i find you very fascinating and um i probably will offline i probably will have to keep plaguing you with lots of different questions and everything because i you know i just love the way you are i do love the way you are and thank you for your contribution to music, not just regular music, but for following your passion and for helping us to listen or enabling us, I should say, to listen mm. to, to what you do. And please continue because we need people like you. Thank you. And I would like to say thank you. And all the people that we were supposed to gig with down the road this week, who <laughs> we weren't able to, we were supposed to play yeah. the Star Festival in Islington with Big U, oh. Pioneers. Dave yeah. Parker, Dennis Al Capone, um, uh, Freddie yeah. Notes, Christopher Ellis. That oh. was supposed to be up in like 10 minutes bike ride from my place, but of course. Mm. Was, yeah. And then two weeks ago, we were supposed to be in Belgium with Tipper Island. Oh, and, no. And um, Winston Peter Honeygale, Roger Robin, but that didn't happen. But it's all right because we're going to do things. We're still doing stuff. <laughs> you can't stop us, you know. You can't stop us. <laughs> You see, you you went through the whole interview and you held it in and then it started to come out. (laughs) Oh, God, Sarah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. And and, um, everybody's going to have the pleasure of smiling and laughing with you and learn a little bit more about you. Thank you very much for honouring me with your presence. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Bye.